Welcome back to the Whiskey With Some Podcast, everybody. This is your co-host, Tyler Yall, and today I am with... Chris Kellum. And our special guest today is... Cameron Coates, owner of Nutri-Prime. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, we sir. got to know each other quite a bit from me dropping in the supplement store 100%, there. And 100%. My, uh, probably one of my uh, my preferred customer. You're my VIP protein bar customer. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Anytime I'm like around and about in that area, I'm like, yeah. I need to go grab a protein bar real quick. Because it's, it's hard for me to get my protein in yeah. just by like the chicken and steak that I eat on a daily basis. I'm like, I need to Pain get in the ass, dude. Exactly. It really is. Yeah. You got to go for convenience these days. People are busy. Right. Yeah. You know I was like, if I know I'm not going to have time to actually sit down and have like a proper meal, I need to get it in somehow. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a protein bar and energy drink connoisseur. So oh, we're yeah. always trying to like update like the latest and greatest. So it's like never the same boring shit on the shelf, you know? And that's so. what, I, that's what really got me coming like mm-hmm. more often than not, just because I would go in and all the stuff I'd hear about that's new. Mm -hmm. that's coming out you guys always have it and you've been doing the um the reels yeah that have like the The, different the um, taste test yeah Yeah, (laughs) exactly got to man we're savages on taste test tuesday i mean you get the real deal too yeah of course (laughs) we're not a sugarcoat shit it's like it's either fire or it's not and if we roast something on taste test tuesday it probably won't be there next time you (laughs) come by so you know all authenticity you know how it is which is perfect Mm -hmm. and a great segue into what we're about to do right now (laughs) There we go. So, <laughs> oh, Lord, let's do it. I was on Instagram and I saw this Cuddy Sark that shows up, and I was like, "This is everywhere. They're really pushing this really hard. This must be a new like Scotch." I'm not really a big Scotch fan to begin with, but I was like, "Hey, you know what? We'll give it a shot." I didn't know how much it cost or anything, but I showed up to the ABC store and I saw it, and it was seventeen dollars. Uh, <laughs> so wow. I was like, "Yeah, I can guess where this is gonna go." Yeah. And um, so now. Cam and Chris, oh, Lord. Cheers. get to try yeah. it. Cheers. Cheers. Let's do it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Remember why I don't like scotch either? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Chris looks confused. <laughs> <laughs> or his soul uh, is broken, one or the other. It's so... Not good. No. Yeah. Yeah, agree. don't don't I sugarcoat mean, it. I was looking <laughs> the problem. I was one looking at it and I was like, "Where is the color? Like it is so light. I feel like our air conditioning unit has more color to it than that <laughs> that scotch. Yeah, which means it was not aged that long. But two, I'm like, I don't. It just tastes like liquor. Like it doesn't. When I think yeah, of liquor, like, like the old school movies where it's like the X's on the the barrels. <laughs> That's yeah. what a moonshine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I it's, think. It's of. a worse moonshine. That white lightning. Cool. I just got hot from drinking it. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Temperature just went up ten degrees in here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We do drink good stuff on here too. So we mm. are actually drinking Buffalo Trace today. There we go. So <laughs> everyone knows Buffalo Trace, unless Chris has some random fact that he happened to pull out of somewhere about Buffalo Trace that he would like to let us all know about. I found out that it was become more and more popular because everyone's watching Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah. right here. That's I've me. never watched right. the show, to be sad. Oh, wow. To be honest, I guess. Dang, you're missing out. I'm one that I prefer shows when they're done. Yeah. So you can because, binge it. Yeah. Because what happens is we'll watch it for a season, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, when's the next episode? And they're like... Uh, it could be six months or it could be two years. I'm like, yeah, pump this. That's w- that's where we're at with Yellowstone right, right now. Um, they they literally left us on a mid season finale, and I'm like, I'm super into this show. Yeah. Like whenever yeah. if I watch something, I'm like, we're in. Like I'm I'm like locked in, locked in. And uh, they were like, yeah, uh, the second half of the season will come out in like three, four, five months, and it's been like two years. Oh wow, yeah, I didn't realize super, it's been that long. Super tight about it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. And then Kevin <laughs> Costner is apparently. Leaving the show, so there is no more Yellowstone oh, wow, without yeah. Big Meech. So, oh. you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. They're yeah, talking about bringing see. Matthew McConaughey on there. I don't. I like Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. I don't like him as much as Kevin Costner, though. Right. So. Yeah. But he doesn't have the the Big Meech vibe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Kevin Costner is like hard. that's dad right there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It'll be a hard transition. Yep. yep. You would think. Right. We'll see. But enough about Yellowstone. Tell us a bit more about yourself, Cam. Yeah. So we um. I am the uh, the proud owner of Nutri Prime here in Wilmington. Um, we are a we're, we're kind of like the no bullshit uh, sports mm-hmm. nutrition retail store. Um, we uh, technically we got started in 2019. We were under another umbrella where we were licensing another business's name. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I was the owner of that location. We licensed uh, the name for about three years, and then in July of 2023, we recently rebranded to Nutriprime. Nice. Um, we only have one store location, soon to be two, yeah. out in Porter's Neck. Um, very excited about that. But we're um, we're a store where it's like it, everybody always recognizes GNC and Vitamin Shop, right? Yes. right. You know what you get with the box chain retailers. With us, we centered our focus around, well, well, for one thing that differentiates us, we don't do any in-house brands. So we Mm -hmm. don't have like a Nutri-Prime line of supplements. There's enough good companies out there that make tremendously valuable products. We don't Mm -hmm. have to go and try and reinvent the wheel for the sake of making, you know, three, four, five bucks more in margin on our products. So for us, we, we just typically like to bring in the highest quality products that money can buy uphold them at what's called map pricing, minimum advertised pricing, and then bring a unique customer experience to go along with it. Yeah. We're results guys. Yeah. We're not like one time high transaction AOV guys where it's like, you know, let me build your basket to $200 right. <laughs> and see you later. You know, for us, we'd rather, you know, bring somebody in, give them a unique customer experience, build rapport and a genuine relationship with them. And then they're going to shop with us forever, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's just a byproduct of doing things the right way. I think anybody that's a business owner should do such, right? right. So that's kind of like the backbone of what we've built on out here in the Wilmington area and, you know, what we continue to want to build in the future. So I like that. Super excited. So that was definitely the feel that I got to, like, the first time walking in as well, Mm -hmm. because I went from, like, solely getting the protein bar and energy drink to, like, I need a new protein. Sure. What should I talk to? Like, I already trust these guys. Let me get some protein. I got some protein there and everything too. And I was like, all right, ready to like go on. Yeah. I've never had creatine before, but I know like to get to the next level, like most um, studied supplement out there and everything. 100%. So I was like, let me go back in there. Cause I trust these guys again. And sure. now I get my creatine there as well too. So it was kind of like just starting off as the protein yeah. bar guy and yeah. just like slowly starting to build up my knowledge base a little bit more too but like yeah you guys did a great job all of you guys in there yeah i I appreciate it i mean like one thing like i always teach our guys is like hey like you have to meet the customer where they're at right Mm -hmm. so like some people they they just come in they're looking for a protein drink or you know a bar or something like that and you know it's it's not your job to try to sell them on other product past that it's Mm -hmm. your job to just get to know that person right you know Um, the first thing that I teach with all my guys, and it's a prerequisite that you like have to do when you're on shift with us is reach your hand out, shake the customer's hand, introduce yourself. Right. You know, everybody likes to do business with a quote unquote friend. Yeah. Right. And that's not to say that you're going to be friends with everybody, but Mm -hmm. like whenever a customer has been in the store, if it's their first time and you make an introduction with them, it's like, Hey, my, my name's Cameron or my name's so-and-so. And you get to meet that person and learn a little bit about them. And then they come back in two, three, four weeks later and you still remember their name and mm-hmm. you call them by their first name as soon as they walk in the store. Like, dude, like yeah. wh- where, where do you go nowadays where that really happens? Like nice. there, there's not any places. So that's just like kind of our thing. It's, it's the simple little things like mm-hmm. that that go a very long way. It's just mm-hmm. something that's lost in, you know, t- today's age with the, you know, social media wave, right. technology, all that stuff. Everybody's so, they, uh, it's funny because I was actually talking with Don Verity a while oh, back yeah. and uh, he was like three foot game. You know, like no three foot game, everybody's behind a screen and they just, Mm -hmm. they have, they have no social skills and you know, it's just, you you have to. And, and it's funny whenever you have basic social skills, it like sets you apart, you know, which is not the way that it should be. (laughs) But (laughs) So So I I have two totally random questions. One, how do you find teammates and people that work with you that are, Mm -hmm going to fit your culture um and two since you guys aren't marketing and making like those big margins like Mm gnc or somebody else um how do you like how do you afford these like new age kids who all want to make a ton of money sure so for us it's um it's how do we take a basic concept like fitness like Mm -hmm. supplements nutrition and how do we make it sexy and appealing right so back to like GNC Environment Shop, you know what you get when you go there, right? right? If you don't know exactly what you went into that store for, chances are highly likely you're not going to find it, right? <laughs> right. So <laughs> the, the person that's working there, they're getting 12, 13, 14 bucks an hour, and they're there for a paycheck. Yeah. I always tell my people, I don't need somebody, I, I don't need a cashier, right? Mm-hmm. I need team members. And you're either bought into fitness, 
bodybuilding, this lifestyle type thing. Yeah. And that's not to say you have to be a bodybuilder by any yeah. means. I, I come from a bodybuilding background, and that's mm-hmm. what initially got me into this. Okay. But a lot of my guys, they either aspire to level up their fitness or their health, something along those lines, or they want to pursue bodybuilding. And like I said, that's what originally got me into it. So I've accumulated a lot of like bodybuilding acumen over the mm-hmm. years, if you will. Um, and before I was actually a su- supplement store nutrition or nutrition store owner, I was a bodybuilding prep coach and I, uh, I still do that. Um, we've actually got our, uh, 2024 Atlantic coast championship show coming up downtown ballast hotel, uh, uh June 8th. Nice. Well, I've already got over a hundred people signed up. It's going to be wow. freaking awesome. Um, but most of my team members, they aspire to do something like that. Mm. And it's what draws them in. Like both of my guys, it's funny because my my operations manager, Taylor, yeah, he was actually my first customer I ever had in the store five years ago. No way. Right? <laughs> he was the first paying customer to walk through my doors. Wow. And he's been working with me for shit almost three years now. Wow. He's awesome, right? Same thing with Gage. Mm -hmm. Gage has been, he was a longtime customer, and they just, they really appreciated how, it's not to, like, pat myself on the back, like, how how I treated them, and they're like, well, dude, like, this is sweet, like, how do I get involved with this? And, you know, like, it's not that we're running some crazy huge operation, but... You know, we, we have SOP just like any other right. business, mm-hmm. and, you know, they come in, and not only do they get a break on supplements, but I actually pay better than GNC and vitamin shop. So I used to work at a GNC. I used to work at a vitamin shop. Mm. And it's not to ever speak down on either one of the businesses. They're great businesses, and they have great people that work for yeah. them. But I, I actually offer more through my one little store than yeah. what you would get at a GNC. So, right. um you know, the, the pay is very competitive and, you know, whenever I say like, we don't do an in-house brand, we still, we strategically buy product. Uh, so the way that we do our purchasing, there's kind of like a rhyme to the, like a rhythm there. And, um, you know, we're able to get more margins than probably some other companies. And and that's the benefit to not trying to carry like a trillion different brands Mm -hmm. to where you can get some volume and some buying power. Right. And then it scales from there as you continue to, you know, multiply units in your business. Mm -hmm. But, um, but for us, it was always like young guy, bring as good an energy to the table as you can, make it attractive, make it sexy. And that's one thing that we, we really try to make a push with, with social media too. You know, that, that's why like, I actually have a guy that I pay to do like content curation. Like yesterday we were filming at the shop for like two hours and just trying to knock stuff out like that. Like very similar to like how you guys try to Mm -hmm. put out high quality, engaging stuff. And I mean, social media is currency nowadays, right? Yeah. So the the more active you are there, building not only like a personal brand, but also your business brand, which most of the time those two tie together these days, the more appealing it is to like that younger demographic. So nice. that's kind of like where, where we've, I don't know, like the grassroots have sprouted from, yeah, right? Right. So. No, you said you were expanding to another location. So I was, I was curious because I know how hard it is in general nowadays, cause we're always looking for people. Um, and like just the mindset of business owners and entrepreneurs, like where do you guys look and what are you looking for? Cause kids these days are either looking for a quick buck or they're not looking for that connection. And mm-hmm. knowing that there's still younger people out there that are looking for that and doing that is great. A hundred percent. I mean, like for us, we, we look for like highly ambitious individuals mm-hmm. and like, Here's what I always told my guys too. Like, part of it's like, you need a job. Everybody needs money, right? Mm-hmm. Basic things. But you also never want to feel like you're at a dead end, right? right? So, like, if you're working in a place and you feel like you have no room for growth, you feel like you've hit your ceiling, you don't give a shit, right? Even if mm-hmm. the pay's good, like, you come over and manage a store and make 60 grand a year, you know, and it's like, okay, what's next, right? Yeah. So, like, for us, we also offer incentives to our team. It's like, and and obviously it's something new that we're doing, going to a second store location. But what's the incentive? Because I can't be in two places at once, right? right. So, it's like, what's the incentive to, you know, like my my racing store manager to Mm -hmm. want to continue to build the business there, continue to grow? Well, so, I mean, we, we do several things to where it's like, hey, it's not just base pay, you know, you get other benefits, you get profit share, these types of things. And, you know, it just, it makes it to where it's not just that stale, like I'm making what I'm making another day, 
You know, it gets mm-hmm. routine and it gets boring. Mm-hmm. So we're constantly trying to do things to re-incentivize the guys. That's a big thing for me because, like, that's what initially got me out of wanting to work, like, the basic nutrition store job. It's like, well, the most I'll ever be here is a general manager, right. and I'll make what I make, yep. and you'll be happy about it. <laughs> Except <laughs> I wasn't happy about it, you know? So the one thing I am thankful about with those experiences is it kind of showed me, hey, like – here's here's a corporate environment and how mm-hmm. it's done. Mm-hmm. This is how they run SOP, their operations, their procedures. And then I went from GNC, I went to Vitamin Shop. I got to dabble there for about a year while I was in okay. college. And then I worked, went to work for more of like a mom and pop style nutrition store in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. And that's where I really fell in love with it because I had free reign. Right. I got my first taste of like, hey, this is what it's like to kind of have your own store that you get to bring the brands in that you know works. Right. You get to service the customer how you know it's best for the customer, not what that upper management, like, corporate-style environment tells you you have to, right. right? So, I mean, like, GNC, like, I'm working there, and if I don't meet a certain quota in GNC product, I get written up. Oh, wow. And it's like, but, I mean, what if that product doesn't meet the customer's needs? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or this brand does a better job at fitting the customer's needs. Why wouldn't I sell them that? Well, I mean, the only answer to it is because there's more money in the GNC product and we want you to sell it. Give a fuck if you like it or not. (laughs) You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, that's just uh, to each their own. That's not how I subscribe to things. Um, For us, it's it's results, results, results. And if you're not getting results, then what can we do to get you results? So, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's fun, but it's uh, we're we're constantly our our game is like, how do we step up value? How do we step up value? Mm hmm. I always tell my guys, like, give first, give second, give third, mm-hmm. and don't expect anything in return, right? So, like, we one thing that w- is different about us is we do the free in-body 270 scans, right? Yeah. So, like, sometimes we'll have people that just want to come in. They want to get an in-body scan. They'll get a printout. We'll break down the printout score rhythm, um, show them where they're at, meet the customer where they're at, right? Yeah. Then we'll do them a custom diet from scratch. Wow. Specific to their goal and their needs, We'll build them a custom training plan for free, right? Jeez. You pay nothing, nice. right? It's something that you can literally take and run with for the next two, three, four, five, six weeks, make tremendous amounts of progress. It didn't cost you a dime, right? But whenever you feel like you've milked all the progress out of that, where are you going to go? Yeah. Right? You're going to yeah. come back and see us. And then that's where we're going to take you through how do we level it up from here, right? And it might be tweaking the diet around. It might not have anything to do with supplements or retail products. So that's like what I say whenever it's like give, give, and give some more, right? So, and and I mean, it's, I don't know, it's different. And a lot of people like will do it and then they'll be like, I really don't owe you anything. I'm like, like, no, No, you're good. (laughs) Like take, take this and run, right? You have the baseline to go be successful. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like everybody knows what they need to do to be successful Mm -hmm. in health, fitness, whatever their goal is. They just don't have the guidance or yeah. they'll they'll think themselves into analysis paralysis with it. Yeah. And, you know, that's where we just try to come in and simplify things, right? A lot of people, they profit nowadays from social media and other retail settings mm-hmm. trying to complicate things. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you've left with $300 in product that you don't know how to use. <laughs> right. You don't know what it does. Yeah. You immediately have buyer's remorse and you're going to half-ass it for the next 30 to 60 days. And then you'll never be back, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So... That's uh, that's what we're trying. We're trying to break that mold. I like that. I've been trying to get in to do that in body scan. I just haven't like pulled the trigger. <laughs> and, like, you, man. Ninety I know, seconds. I need to come in. Ninety seconds. That's all it takes. I'm always in a suit for my job, and I'm like, I yeah. don't know, like what's going on. With this. No, like, you just gotta let the dogs out, bro. You gotta pop the shoes and right? socks off. That's all, all right. All. That's yeah. it. All right. <laughs> yeah. I can. I can do that. Do some of the feet we see through there on a daily basis. <laughs> I oh, can right. imagine. Yeah, we we disinfect the machine every time, but right. So, yeah, <laughs> talking about random nasty feet because you guys are on social media i saw this thing with Shaq, and he's like i have paid people a thousand dollars for a pedicure he's like my (laughs) feet are so busted because i mean he's over seven feet tall 300 plus pounds size 22 shoe yeah something like that (laughs) and like and your feet still don't fit in the shoes properly because and he likes his feet clean he liked them painted i was like you got he, I saw a video of his feet the other day. I was like, 
Oh my gosh. Do you have beautiful feet? No. Oh wow. <laughs> thousand dollar after thousand dollar pedicure. I better have a damn exact beautiful foot. No, he's like my feet smell Beyond. and they are nasty. So I'm paying you because uh, you're gonna have to deal with it. And I was like, oh well. I'm gonna have to have an OnlyFans for my feet to pay for that thousand yeah. dollar pedicure. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, seriously. You know the guys, um I, I guess the husband and wife at Paradigm that do yes. the, Yeah. Yep. So Sean. they yep, Sean. They yep. um they worked or I guess Sean worked on Shaq before. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, fun I'm, random I'm, facts of Wilmington. Exactly. I was about to say, man, he uh he probably had his work cut out for him. Right. He's a big human. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say, like, like, how do you work on a guy like that? And yeah. he was just like, Very you gotta, yeah, he's like, you got to learn about leverage. <laughs> yeah. I, I was about to say, I can only imagine. We um, we, we have several bodybuilders that will, we kind of run like a little camp sometimes where we'll have like some of my out of state bodybuilders. They'll come in for a week or two and oh, they'll nice. stay with us and we'll put them through like kind of like a, I, I call it camp prime. Right. Yeah. And it's like tr- eat, sleep, train, bodybuilding. Right. And, um, we've got one of my guys coming in, Big Joe, and, uh, he's just, he's a mountain of a man, right? He's huge. And, uh, he'll be doing our June show here, but, uh, for, for bodybuilding and just athletics in general, like the, the tissue work is like tremendously beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people like slack out on mainly because it's expensive, you know, B you feel beat up afterwards, right? We've uh we got a girl that we go to shoot man she's a stone's throw right over here I don't know if you know her Alicia with movement muscle yeah, therapy yeah Dude, she's, she's fantastic phenomenal. I've been a couple of times yeah absolutely phenomenal I mean she brutalizes you in there for an yeah. hour but afterwards like dude I'll go work out the next day. Mm-hmm. And, like, the amount of blood flow that I get, yeah. like, dude, she always does, like, my lower body and my lower back because if I'm going to get injured, it's always my lower back. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm just prone to it. But, um, dude, I will – I feel amazing after I go see her. So, like, shameless plug, movement muscle therapy right, right there. <laughs> uh, pa- paradigm performance as well. Dr. Sean, he's he's an yeah. absolute beast too. So, um, but, no, get your tissue work done. Eat clean. Train hard. You know the deal. Yeah. So, what got you into bodybuilding? <laughs> Okay, um, so I, I started working out whenever I was young. My uh, my mom used to drop me off at kids care in uh, at the Gold's Gym in Garner. Okay, oh, yeah. I, was, I was born in Garner, but I grew uh-huh. up in the Raleigh area, right? Okay. Um, I I played a lot of sports. I was a baseball and football guy. Mm-hmm. Whenever I got to high school and I started playing high school football, that's where I really got exposed to like the athletic side of training. Right. Mm. You know, like full body days, hang cleans, deadlifts, bench press, that type of thing. But I, I didn't really get that bodybuilding bug till I was probably about 15, 16 years old. Okay. And my mom, she was always in the gym training. She wasn't a bodybuilder, but she damn well could have been, yeah. right? And um, she always took care of herself. My dad didn't really train her or anything. He was more of a golf guy. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but she encouraged me to go to the gym for sports. Hmm. And so as I'm playing football, I started out playing free safety. Okay. And I, I was good at free safety. I was yeah. fast. And then our starting free safety got hurt, or excuse me, our starting middle linebacker got hurt. And I was like, I was right in the middle, right? So right. I was like, they were like, hey, let's put 20 pounds on Coates and stick his ass there. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> that's what they started doing. And so my football coach is like feeding me like mass gainer shakes and, you <laughs> yeah, know, like, gosh. dude, you just got to kill calories, that type yeah. of thing. And, uh, I mean, I started putting on weight. I was I was getting circular. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I put on weight and I, I – Super long story short, I fell in love with the whole bodybuilding, get bigger, stronger part of it yeah. mm-hmm. versus the actual athletic side of it. So I played football all throughout high school, baseball and everything. Um, I, I turned into a bowling ball by the t- <laughs> by my senior year. But um, I started going to this, uh, this store in Raleigh mm-hmm. that um, it was owned by an IFBB professional bodybuilder. Oh, wow. And that was the store that I actually ended up going to work for after oh, no GNC and Vitamin Shop. I would come home on the weekends, and I would uh, I, I would run the shop, basically, like, manage it. Yeah. So I, I only did that, I mean, because I could get my supplements cheaper, and yeah. I wasn't much of a party guy, so I was going to East Carolina. And what originally – it's funny, Big Joe that I was just talking about, he was actually the one that introduced me to that store, oh, right? I so that. I walked That's into a cool. Fitness 19 whenever I was 16 years old, and I see Big Joe in there. And I didn't even realize at the time, but I had gone to middle school with Joe. And uh, – I thought I was looking at a grown man. I mean, he's about 6'2", easily 230, 240 pounds. Mm-hmm. He's just bobbing up and down with 500 pounds on his back squatting. Like, it was <laughs> nothing. Like, it was a featherweight. And I was like, holy shit, dude. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And um, 
he turns around. I was like, Holy, I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> and, um, me and Joe, Joe was my first training partner. So he okay. kind of introduced me to the bodybuilding style of working out. I started working at the store in Raleigh, learning from the professional bodybuilder mm-hmm. that owned that. So he taught me a lot about nutrition, supplements, and some of the other things that go along with bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. And um, I was hooked from there. You know, I did yeah, my nice. first show whenever I was a freshman in college. Oh, wow. And I competed off and on throughout college. Very difficult task to do if anybody's mm-hmm. out there trying to do that. Um, but uh, once I graduated or was about to graduate, I had the opportunity to license the store name oh, wow. from our Raleigh owner, right? So it was a deal where it was like, hey, you can spend the money and I will license you the, the name and what little systems that went along right. with it. For, for the most part, it was very much him just running it yeah. and over servicing the hell out of people. And it mm-hmm. works great for him. He, he still to this day he runs a phenomenal business. Wow. And um, it's just something that's not really scalable, right? Mm-hmm. And so whenever you license a name or something like that, it's like, you know, there's usually some supporting things to go along yeah. with it. Yeah. But uh, we, we ran that for three years. We, we opened up. We, we <laughs> It was funny because whenever I start opened the store, like, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about contractors or build outs. So we got to build oh, yeah. the store out from the start. And, you know, it was, it was cool. The store looked great. I just didn't have any money for product. So no. I, I had like $1,000 worth of product and people are coming in and out and they're like, oh, shit. They're like, you guys like going out of business or something? <laughs> I was like, actually, no, just we, we just got started. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we were able to ramp it up from there. And um, by the time we came up to the end of our licensing agreement, we just made the cumulative decision like, hey, I think we're going to do our own thing. It's no right. hard feelings. Um and, you know, rebranded to Nutriprime. But as far as the bodybuilding stuff, that's that's kind of like how I segued into it. And it's funny how things kind of come full circle in that regard because Joe was the first one to get me into bodybuilding. And now I get the privilege of coaching Joe, right? <laughs> that's crazy. So I've been working with him for the last two years. He's an absolute beast. He's an awesome guy. We're, um, we're going to try to make a run for his pro card this year in Chattanooga, oh, wow. Tennessee in the end of June. Ooh. And uh, I, I have no doubt that he's going to crush it. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. hundred percent. But so when it comes to bodybuilding, uh, which did you compete in? Uh, so, so for me, I'm not genetically, I'm not like a super big guy. So for me, I always did classic physique. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cause I had like that. Whenever I get lean, lean, I have like a tighter waist, like 28, 29 inches. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not like a crazy big guy, and I just didn't want to kill myself to put on all the size that it would require to be successful in open bodybuilding. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's why I kind of went the classic route. But, um, man, with some of these guys that compete nowadays, their structures are just so crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. If you're not genetically elite, it's very difficult, right? And, I mean, like, you can you can do everything perfect, and you can still have a freak that comes out of the woodwork mm-hmm. and just dust you, right? Yeah. And so in that regard, it's not like it's always fair. But that's why I always tell my athletes, like, hey, like, I want you off social media. I don't need you scoping the competition because it doesn't matter right, at no. the end of the day. Like, you could have some freakazoid that comes from California that just needs a quick <laughs> qualification. <laughs> right. And they jump in this show, and they just completely obliterate the fucking stage. And, like, you did everything perfect for 16 weeks. There's nothing you can do yeah. about it. So that's why I'm always like, control your controllables. Just check the boxes off every day. Right. right? You know, win one day, win the next day, win enough days, win the week, win enough weeks, win the month, and so mm-hmm. forth. Right. So, and if nothing else, like you at least by the end of it, you're in phenomenal shape. Right. Like that's why I tell all my athletes that are doing this June show. I'm like, dude, like beginning of June, beginning of summer, like even if you don't come away with that $30 trophy, you yeah, know, right. <laughs> you, you look fucking great and you get to enjoy your summer with ass, exactly, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and, and that's not to be discouraging to anybody if you're not like a genetically primed human being. Um, bodybuilding is something that's amazing and it's, um, I always tell everybody this, like, if you can do a bodybuilding show start to finish, it shows you that you have the discipline, you have the power to finish what you start with something, right? And um, if you take that basic principle alone and you carry it over into other avenues of your life, relationships, business, family, whatever it is, be successful in anything, right? right? Because you can keep your word to yourself. Right. So it's a mental thing for a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people, they want to do it because they're like, I just want to see if I can do it, you know? And I'm always encouraging for those people too, right? Like, you don't have to do it to be some, like, 
hardcore pro bodybuilder, which, by the way, I mean, you can get your pro card. <laughs> right. It doesn't change your life like it used to, right? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Back in the 90s, if you were a pro bodybuilder, like, that that meant something, yeah, right? Because yeah. they only gave out, like, four or five pro cards a year. Now they give out, like, two, three hundred a year. Oh, so, really? Oh, wow. How did yeah. I realize that? Yeah. I mean, between and, – and, look, that's, that's all for the sake of growing the sport, sure, too. Yeah. So, I mean, like, they used to have, like, two national shows. They had nationals and USAs. And now I think they do, like – six or seven national shows where you can turn pro and they've got countless other divisions. They used to just have yeah. bodybuilding and then female bodybuilding, right. you know, pick one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, but, um, you know, it, it's good because now it's opened up the the door for more people to be able to participate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, it's all positive, you know, that's why like you, even you go on social media these days and even if you're not a fitness or bodybuilding person, right. like your explorer page is still going to show somebody that's shredded exactly. at some point, you know, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah, kind of thinking of that too, just kind of how many more cards are giving out. It's probably just a tiny bit higher percentage yep. just because there's so many more people that are involved in it than what it was back in the 90s too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like. I know a lot more people that have just, even just started in the last five years versus the last 15 mm-hmm. years, let alone back in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, dude, back in the 90s, like, you're talking about like heyday bodybuilding, right? right. I mean, like. It, Everybody in the 80s and 90s, they want to be jacked and tan. Like, there, <laughs> yes, there was no so in-between. Yeah. yeah, there was no physique where it was just, like, from the waist up. It's, like, you were either swole or you were you were no. average, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's a good and a bad thing because some people, like, we get to the part of bodybuilding where you see bodybuilders that, that pass away and die right, from yeah. a very young age. And um, it, it's funny because, like, at, at one point I was that guy that was, like, whatever I got to do, let's fucking do it. Like, you know, and obviously there's certain things that go along with bodybuilding. That's not always the best for your general health. Right. Um, if you want to do it at a high level. Right. Um, so in that regard, you know, the, the pharmaceutical side of bodybuilding, like there's a right way, there's a wrong way to do things. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think I, I was a senior in, uh, college and uh, I was sitting in my accounting, uh, CF one class (laughs) And uh, I was scrolling on Instagram because I didn't like paying attention. I was bored. Yeah. <laughs> I hate accounting. And if, you, if you're if you taking it, you probably will too. Yep. But, <laughs> we just um, talked about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not a numbers guy like that. But we had a uh, we had a really big, promising bodybuilder. Uh, his name was Dallas McCarver. And he just, boom, he kicked the bucket at, like, 26 years old. Oh, and, wow. like, this dude was, like, pegged to be, like, the next Mr. Olympia. Like, oh. biggest, baddest guy on the stage. Like, he was a monster. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not, not quite worth it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I'll love bodybuilding until the day that I die, but I'm just not willing to put my health at jeopardy yeah, for right. it, you know? So, I was, Is that like the, was it from like cycling? Or was it from like steroid? What, was it all of the above? Like, yeah, it was, it was kind of all of the above. So, I mean, like, you know, they, they released his autopsy afterwards mm-hmm. and, you know, it, I, I don't necessarily believe everything that you hear with stuff like that because I think it's fabricated just for sensationalism purposes. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they, they did his, his, uh, autopsy and his, his heart was like three times the size of a normal human heart. You know, all of his vital organs were enlarged. He actually had cancer on his thyroid gland. And a lot of these things can be stimulated through exogenous hormone, like growth Mm -hmm. hormone, abuse of steroids, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, whenever it comes to performance enhancing drugs, like this is one thing that we we actually get hammered with PED questions at the shop I all the time, right? Yeah. All the time, <laughs> because we're very close to the UNCW campus, so we'll get mm-hmm. a lot of kids that come in, and you know, they're like, "Hey, man, I'm thinking about taking ABC or XYZ." Mm-hmm. You know, what, what do you think? And um, Look, take, take it from the guy that started taking steroids when he was 19, okay? Mm-hmm. Been there, done that, okay? Um, at the ripe young age of 26 years old, I'm on TRT replacement for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. Now, I'm okay with that. Yeah. It, it's it's something that, like, I settled with a long time ago, but there's a lot of people that don't want to get married to, you know, a, a syringe for the rest of their life, you know? Uh-huh. Um, there's other things that go along with it, like fertility, like, you know, and, and whenever guys come in, they're like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a cycle of this or a cycle of that. I'm like... I don't say do it or don't do it. I just say, okay, well, if you do, this is what you can expect. Yep. If you Mm -hmm. don't, you know, this is how long it might take you to make the progress that you're describing to me that you want to make. Right. right? 
Um, so it's just like inform, inform, inform. You know, it's not our job to say, oh, dude, you should try this, you should try that. Like, right. you know, that's that's stupid. And, you know, disclaimer, nobody should take steroids, right? <laughs> I mean, unless you are a highly, highly competitive athlete competing in a sport or activity that does not drug test, you mm-hmm. should not use steroids. Um, just straight up. And, you know, the ramifications that come along with it, you know, they depends on the person and what you're genetically predisposed to. Um, but, you know, it's... If you want to compete at a high level, like, yeah, of course, there's risks associated with anything. You know, you go step in the octagon, you know, the right. UFC, like, you're probably going to have some head trauma. You're probably going to have a fucked up brain by the <laughs> end of it, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just, it depends on the person, how serious they're looking to take it. But most of the kids that come in, they're like, man, I want to be straight. I want to get some girls this summer. You know, I'm like, mm. I'm like, well, dude work on your game right you know <laughs> i was like you got no game dude exactly <laughs> and this I'm is like, what you think your match bullet's gonna be <laughs> exactly and i'm like dude i know so many bodybuilders that are shredded and they still got no game and right. they still got no girls you know <laughs> so it's like dude you could have the washboard as you look great at the beach and you know it's still like there's other things that go along with it so right. um yeah. but now nah, we um we just always try to steer people in the right direction man you know yeah. but um as far as like my personal side of it don't do it yeah, yeah. don't do it so it's been interesting. Despite my current physique, I've always looked I've always followed people who are like into bodybuilding and mm-hmm. staying in shape and I'm like this this makes sense. This is a good lifestyle in general. And then I started looking at something. I think it was Ronnie Coleman. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And I was like how like all of the stuff that he's he's gone through and he is one of those people that like he is a, he was a natural physique freak. Oh yeah. And then he was like, I still can't win. So then he had to join the club. Nope. And then the fact that he still won competitions with like half his back broken, I was like, that's nope. one that tells you you should push through and just mm-hmm. pain is just temporary for most people. Mm-hmm. But in general, I'm just like, that's crazy all of the stuff that people go through just to win sometimes. Sure. I mean, like, Ronnie Coleman is, um, I'll preface this in saying, like, I don't I don't know that we'll ever see another bodybuilder quite like Ronnie Coleman. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, like, you, you're talking about the human equivalent of a Belgian blue cow, right? So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they, they actually did genetic testing on Ronnie and then another bodybuilder. It's actually the bodybuilder that brought Ronnie to the dark side, Flex Wheeler. Yeah. Very, very popular 90s guy, tremendous mm-hmm. physique. Um but Ronnie, he had a myostatin deficiency. And so myostatin is a, it's a gene that actually turns off protein synthesis that allows oh, wow. your body to rebuild, repair, and get bigger and stronger faster. Hmm. So your body is a smart machine. It likes to basically, it likes to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I, I almost tell people this, like it's almost better, and this is not me advocating for obesity, <laughs> it's almost better and healthier for you to be 300 pounds with fat Versus 300 pounds of muscle because mm-hmm. muscle has a tremendously huge nutrient demand and oxygen right. demand. And so your heart is working in overtime to pump blood to all this muscle, right? So whenever you look at someone like Ronnie, he was just like a genetically gifted individual that was yes. meant to That's carry crazy. that much muscle. <laughs> yeah. Now you talk about somebody that artificially stimulates the production of all that muscle, but their frame was not built to carry it in the first place. Mm that's where you can start running into health complications, right? I mean, Jay Cutler and another one, for example. Like, there's a reason that these guys are still around and they don't have some of the quote-unquote health effects that some other bodybuilders that really pushed it do. So, you know, Ronnie, I mean, like, it's unfortunate to see where he's at right now, like in the wheelchair and Mm -hmm. stuff, but a lot of that was actually stimulated from playing sports. Oh, yeah. Not even bodybuilding. And obviously it probably exacerbated it, you know, squatting 800 pounds and (laughs) shit like that, but... That was just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, still this day at the store, we got like four TVs in the store, and we'll play Ronnie Coleman's Unbelievable yeah. DVD all the time <laughs> on YouTube. And uh, it's still just as impressive yeah. today as it was the first time I saw it, man. I just think he is, he, when I see him and like what he was in the past, like he was the epitome of like his muscles actually worked. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus the people who are like, oh, I'm big. And they're like, well, I can only lift like. Yeah. 200 pounds. I'm like, you, you're that big and you can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, like he, he was one of the guys that's, um, the, the gym that he trained at the Metroflex in Arlington, Texas, mm-hmm. Brian Dobson owned that. He was an old power lifter and bodybuilder. Dude, like that's, it's like a religion there, man. I mean, yeah. like Metroflex, they got a box at the door that says, leave your phones here. Don't let me see it in the, in the gym or we'll kick you out, you know, cancel your membership. Yeah. 
And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I mean, it's a grunt, scream, cuss gym, you know, blood on the floor, spit yeah. on the mirrors, that type of shit. And, it's, uh, you know, th- you got a lot of world-class bodybuilders that came out of there. Branch Warren, Ronnie Coleman, mm. um, Johnny Jackson. Like, wow. it, it's just, how could you not whenever you got Big Ron is kind of like the, yeah. the guy, yeah. I mean, best bodybuilder of all time ever, period. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I hate seeing him in the wheelchair nowadays, but. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's what steroids and bodybuilding get you. It's like, no. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's actually <laughs> disc-related injuries from sports. Yeah. Right. You know, they got exacerbated. Exactly. Because I saw him, I've seen a few of his interviews, and he was like, no, I was having surgery going into these, like, bodybuilding competitions before I switched over. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, 100%. It's just crazy to think about that. Um so a slight, slight switch from the bar- bodybuilding side of it to the average human coming into the yeah, shop. Yeah, so yeah. now that we saw the pinnacle of the, what everyone can do. Uh-huh. So I know some people that I talk to, and I enjoy fitness. I love working out nearly every day. And people are like, I just can't get into it. Mm-hmm. What's like a few things you would tell the people that want to do better at the gym and want to get bigger, want to look better, sure. that don't know where to start? Whenever we, we take somebody that's um, – Ground floor, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, man, like, I'm here, and I got it. I got to go there, right? Um, Again, it's a game of simplifying it, right? So the reason we don't take somebody and try to throw them in the deep end with some crazy diet or some crazy supplement protocol or training system that they're going to follow for two weeks and fall Mm -hmm. off, it's just, you know, what's the best diet? The one you'll stick to. What's the best training program? The one you'll stick to. So rather than saying, like, hey, John Doe, like, I need you in the gym six days a week, It's like, hey, John Doe, what are you doing right now? Okay? Write it down. Okay, I'm writing down what they're doing. Okay, how you eat, how you train, or if you don't train at all. Do you think we could maybe start with one to two training sessions per week and then some afternoon or morning walks, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could eat a meal and then go walk for 15 to 20 minutes afterwards, right? Right. You know, if you get a lunch break, you get an hour, eat for an hour, and then go walk for 20 minutes, right? Not only is that going to help with nutrient partitioning, digestion, but it's also going to help, you know, get vitamin D, some other vital things that you need on a day-to-day basis. But for us, it's um, it, it's just for the sake of dumbing it down, right? Mm-hmm. Is people, they go on Dr. Google and they yep. read a million different things. Yep. I was victim of it. So, I mean, I would go <laughs> on and I'd be like, what's so-and-so's training program? Or, yeah. you know, trying oh, to do gosh, Jay, yeah. Jay Cutler's a day yeah. in the life, <laughs> you know, eating 12 meals a day. Right. And it's like... You know, that type of stuff, it just, it, it's not compliable. You can't stick to it long term. And so that's why I say, hey, let's do this for two weeks. Why don't you come back? Let's put you on the in body. Let's see what we're, where we're at. You know, how will have the two, uh, past two weeks been? You know, right. oh, I missed a meal here, you know, fell off there. And see how we can fill in gaps. That That's like mm. our job is where do we fill in the gaps? And, and how do we make it something that is routine with your lifestyle right. to where we're not doing a 180 or dumping what you're currently doing upside down. Right. So some people, they're just, they're busy as hell with their job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they might not have time to eat four meals per day, mm-hmm. but could you do like a breakfast lunch and then like a couple of shakes or something like that, right. you know, or, or a protein bar or something that's convenient. Right. Anything mm-hmm. that keeps you from dr- hitting the drive through out of convenience. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, as far as like what I would prescribe for somebody, like if they came in and they're like, Hey man, I'm not doing anything. Let's try to get two to three workout sessions per week in the gym with s- some type of resistance training. Right. It doesn't have to be heavy weight or anything. And let's try to do two to three cardio sessions per week. Yeah. That could be something as simple as a morning walk outside. Mm-hmm. I'm a big advocate of doing fasted cardio. So getting up first thing in the morning, your body wants to get out in the sun anyways, it's getting warm. So Go take a walk outside. You don't have to be cooped up in a dark room on a treadmill, you know? Yeah. And um, that's usually something that everybody can say, oh, well, yeah, I can wake up 20 minutes earlier for that, you know? Yeah. Especially once you see how good you feel after two, three weeks <laughs> doing exactly, it, you yeah. know? So it, it's just the little things. Stack the little wins mm-hmm. because little wins surmount to big wins. And then once you start stacking big wins, that's where you you build routine, right? I'm not the, like... I don't subscribe to the ideation of like, oh, do this for 21 days, build a new habit. Like, that's corny. You know? right, yeah. <laughs> so, like, no, I mean, and, and more importantly, you have to keep in mind why you're doing it. So, like, whenever you feel like, oh, I'm about to fall off here, I'm, I'm about to, to you, you know, know, slip, slip up, up on, on this, this. A cheeseburger's, cheeseburger's real good. good. It's like, like you know, why am I why even am I doing, doing this in the first place? place? Yeah, you know? Yeah. You know? So, so, 
Um, um, the, the, the bigger, the bigger y, y usually, usually absolves you, you of the little, little speed bumps, speed bumps in, between. in between. So, oh. so. I like that. That's, That's great. great. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I do agree, I do agree with, with the, the morning, morning walks. walks. Anytime, Anytime I do get those in, I feel significantly better than I do through the day. But just, just further on down the road. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can tell, I can tell if, if I have had, had my morning walk a couple days or not. It's just hundred percent. Yeah, not not. Yeah, you like afternoon walks or something? I do. I do. Like when we did seventy five hard a few years ago. I would, I would work, work out, out at night time. Uh-huh. I've always, I've always been, like, if like, I work, if I work out, out at night, I'll go to sleep. I'll, I'll be fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, Anytime I do a morning workout, workout I, am I am dead, dead tired, tired and, like, and like useless, useless for most of the day. day. See, now, See, now I do, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of So I can do my walk in the morning. morning. I love that. But I can't, for some reason, I cannot push any weight in the morning when I train. I have to do all my resistance training in the afternoon. That's the bodybuilder in me. It's like they always taught us to train like later in the afternoon, early evenings, because you got more food and hydration. In your system. System. So, so. But I mean, but, like, I, mean, like I, I will say, I, will say I, do I do always feel good if I train in the morning. Like, I feel like, good. I, feel I, know, that I know that my performance is going to be maybe, maybe like 10, 15, 15 percent, percent less. less. Right, right. But, but, I mean, it's, I don't know. Something, 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 something to be said about, said about kicking, kicking your endorphins, endorphins off in the morning. Right, yeah, yeah. I like it in the energy going in the morning. So I do my cardio in the morning. And that kind of gets me going. But it's, yeah, for some reason, I can't kink it. Get yeah, behind the scenes in the morning. Yeah, the, the pumps <laughs> are weak. weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, get that. I get that. I'm not I'm saying, saying don't, don't do it. it. I'm just, I'm just everyone's, everyone's different. different. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm the, just king the king of, of night time. time. I tell my I tell wife, wife that all the time. I'm like, I'm a midday person. I could take a nap in the middle of the day, then go and do everything, and still, like, like, I get it. I mean, my my girlfriend's a big night owl, and, uh, I, I've, I've always kind of been, been a night, night out, too, too but, but I also, I also have, have a huge appreciation for, like, for like the early, early morning hours, hours. Night, night. Especially, especially because my phone's, phone's not usually exploding, exploding you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like six, six and eight-ish in the yeah. morning, yeah. so, so I like to like get, get up early, early. Some, some, some nights, nights whenever, whenever I get, like, like drug, drug out, out, like, like not, not like out, but, like, I'm up too late, I don't know, it's tough, you know, you know. But, but it's the same thing too. Like my wife, wife like she's, she's the most, most productive, productive at like, like nine, ten, 10 o'clock, o'clock at night. And I'm like, I'm like I need to go to bed because I'm waking up, up at five. Yep, yep. <laughs> but, yeah. Same, same thing. thing. So I'm much I'm better, better in the morning, morning than she is. I haven't been able to tell it back to five yet. I tried for a little while and I just I was a zombie for doing it. I tried getting up like like doing my five a.m. like cold plunge and shit like that. And I was just like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually at, my at my station at like 8 o'clock, o'clock in the morning, morning there, so, like so like I need to be up, up by 5, five, five, five when I want to get anything in before like everything, everything blows, blows up. up. I get like that, that 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's, it's crazy, crazy how, how work always has, has, has everything everything revolves, revolves around, around the work schedule, unfortunately. Has to, at least right now. Exactly. I mean, the goal is to make it where you don't have to set an alarm clock. Right, right. Talking about not setting an alarm clock. Um, um, what, what would success, success look like, like for you? For you? <coughs> success, success for me, for me is, is um, and it's and funny because if you had asked that question, question a couple, couple of years ago, ago I would have given you a totally, totally different, different answer. answer. Um, um, a couple of years, years ago, I would have been like, oh, success, success looks, looks like, like, you know, you know th- th- this, this many, many commas. commas. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong, like, money is my pride for success, right? Right. But for me, it's building something, um, that, that gives, gives such, such a, a uh, tremendous, tremendous amount, amount of value, value that, that uh, the, money the money that comes, that comes as a byproduct, byproduct is just is just that it's a byproduct. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm more, more focused, focused on like, like and it's, and it's not, not even, even sound cliche. I'm focused on like what's, what's the journey, journey of, of you know building this from you know a small little local retail nutrition store into something that's a trusted brand. Like like so I guess now my answer to that question would be like like. Whenever, whenever you, you see, see that MP come, come to your, to your market, market or your area, area you, know you know that you, that have, you have a place, place that's, that's, that's solid, solid right? right? That, that I could, I could go, go to and I have whatever, whatever problem, problem it is, is, and these guys, guys are going to help, help me with it, you know? You know? And, and um, um, it's funny it's that funny you mentioned 75 hard. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Shout to Andy. Andy. Yeah, yeah. Huge, 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 huge uh, uh, real AI right here. Right here. Yeah. Um, that, um, that's the big reason why we, we, we saw a ton of first form stores. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I love the brand. The brand. Amazing, amazing products. products amazing, amazing, amazing cult like following, right? right. 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 So, so it, it's, it's to build, build something, something similar, similar to where it's, it's like a, a it's a community, it's a community driven, driven project, project mm-hmm. because, because like one person, person can only do so much. So, much. Mm-hmm. so, so it's to create, to create something, something that, that appeals, appeals to, to other people, people for the right, right reasons. reasons. 
that's, that's not, not for, for the sake, the sake of, of oh, oh, build it build on y'all's back, back and then profit, and profit at, the at the top. You know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? It's, it's, it's to, to be like, like a, a group thing, thing that, that everybody, everybody wants, wants to be involved, involved for, but they want to be involved in it for the right reasons. You know, that's to genuinely help and provide. And you hear the term value like tossed around so loosely these days, but like. What, what, what value, value is to one person is totally, totally different, different to the next. To the next. Yes. But, but if we can we give you something, something that can, that can quite, quite literally change your life, your life if, if not save your, your life, life, if you're, if you're coming from a position of like very, very poor health, health right, right. and we and can, we can do, do it at scale, scale well, then that's, well, then that's success for me, right? Right. So, you know, I just, I remember what it's like to, because I mean, whenever I was in high school, I was like, okay, I need to. My goal is to put on muscle and get bigger, right? And I pursued it relentlessly. And, and I was working two jobs, jobs in high school, school like, like I was shucking oysters, oysters at 40 Street Oyster, Oyster, Oyster Bar, and I was, and working, I was working at the Country, country Club at, at Preston Wood, Wood, you know, yeah. driving yeah. off yeah. carts and doing the smoothie bar, bar and, shit and shit like that. that. And, and all, all my paycheck, paycheck would go, go to my, my supplements, supplements, right? right? Mm-hmm. Now, now, now I would say put all that towards food and everything, you know, do the foundational stuff, but... I just remember what it was like to go into a nutrition store and spend half or all my paycheck and then leave, and then 30 days later, I'm like, damn. <laughs> where are where the games, bro? bro? What, what, you, know, you know what happened? happened? Where's, Where's my money, money and my games? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so it's just it's that just perpetual, perpetual feeling, feeling of getting, getting got. got, and, and um, you know, you know it's, it's, it's something, something that I just that never want to like, feel with us, us, right? Right. And so, and so if there's, there's anything that we can do to to further enhance not only the products but the practical knowledge and like it's like, hey, this is how it's done because how it's done now. Is how, it's how it was, it was done, done 20, 20 years ago, years ago 50, 50 years, years ago, ago will, be will be done 25, 25 years, years from, from now, now, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, so it's not, not that it's it's, it's not complicated. complicated, and, and we're, we're just not not we're not going to have a complicated sake of making an extra buck, you know. And if we can do that at scale, that's the goal. So, have you heard of Alex from Of course, yeah, yeah. I was like, really? Of course, of course. I knew it was kind of a stupid question, but it's for the rest of the people out there. Um, when you're when talking, you're talking about, about the, the, like the value, value ladder, ladder. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a lot, a lot of what, what you preach to. So it's like, like, that's right, right on. on. Yeah, yeah, man, man. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I just shoot, shoot I, 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 I read a million, million dollar offers. offers. Yeah, yeah. Probably a couple, Probably a couple months, months ago. ago. Um, and I've, I've read, read everything. everything. I, I, I can see his content like religiously. Chris Williamson, Andy Frisella, Bradley, like all those guys. They're phenomenal. I mean, like Alex. Alex. Alex, Alex more so than some, some of the others, others because, because he's so young. So young. I you know, know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, he's such, such a brilliant, brilliant guy. guy. <laughs> and I mean, like, like his, his ability to simplify things. things. Exactly. exactly. That's why he's yeah. so yeah. healing yeah. everybody, right? right. It's, 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 it's complicated, complicated scenario, scenario simplified, simplified answer. answer. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And in a lot of ways, that's what we try to do at the shop, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Alex, Alex he, he, actually he actually helped mold, mold some of our SOP, SOP that we've got here. Not, not on like a one to one level. Like, like I, I, haven't, I haven't worked with Alex or Rosie, but, but uh, maybe, one maybe one day. One day yeah, 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 actually, actually uh, um, one, of the, one of the clients from the studio, from the studio. he, he um, got to meet Alex, Alex or Rosie. Rosie. That's and awesome. Work with them. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome, dude. I can only imagine. Yeah, great dude, dude. But one last question for you before we let you out of here. And if you could tell your yourself one thing, what would it be? I know you mentioned a few things. Right. What's one, one of those, those big, big takeaways? Take-away. Slow, Slow down. down. Yeah. Yeah. Slow, Slow down, down right? right? Like, like, so, so there, there, there is, is a difference, difference between working with a sense of urgency mm-hmm. and then and rushing, rushing your life, life away, away right? Right. right? And, and I, fell I fell into the, the, the category, category of rushing, rushing my life, life away, away because I had this ideation. Whenever I graduated college, I was like, by the time I'm 25, I'm a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and, and you know, and, you at, the know time, at the time, you're just you're like, you're like oh, high, high achieving guy. guy. I have, I have high, high standards, standards for myself. For myself. Well, well, in my opinion, my opinion what, what you what have, you have is, is unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. expectation. Right, right. And, and so, so, and this, this is also kind of something, something, something I almost feel like, like Mosey would say, say, but it's like you know, don't don't you don't have shit to show until you know, like you're almost like thirty years old at least, right? Most of the time. So it's like kids will get out of college all the time, and like like we're having all these conversations with them at the store, which is great. We love meeting everybody. And, you know, you seeing, know what seeing what their goals, goals are, are they're going after, after college. college. But, but I can, I can, I can always, always pick, pick out the kids, kids that are like, they're like, in a they're big, in a big damn, damn rush, rush to get, get there. there. And, and, you know. You know sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's just one, one of those things, things where it's like, like for me, for me like, like, like I said a few minutes ago, it's like the journey is what I'm trying to appreciate. It's not easy. There's a lot of days where I go to work and it's like, dude, this fucking 
fucking sucks, sucks bro. bro. It's like, it's like shit, shit sandwich, sandwich after shit sandwich. 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 But, but similar, similar to, to the, the whole bodybuilding body regard, regard, it's like, like whenever, whenever, whenever you, you start, start something, something, you can finish, finish it. it. Like, like almost like end my less, like power of one more, right? So it's like one more day. One more day. One more day. Like, Dude, dude, we, we opened, opened up, up probably, probably the, worst the worst time that we ever, that we ever could have, have in business, like, like right, right before COVID. Right, right, yeah. And thankfully, and thankfully we, we were able, able to keep our doors open, but we were literally doing, like, $100, $100 days. Uh, yeah. so, so, you know, it's, like, just, like just, just enough to keep the lights, the lights on. on. We made we it made through it. it. Yeah. Right, right. But it was but power one more. more. Power one more. So, like, like, and that's where we are today, too, still. I mean, it's like, like... We're just, we're getting, just started. getting started. You know, right, we're yeah. five, five years in. We're just, just getting started. started. So, um, you know, you know we're, we're not even anywhere, anywhere close to, to you know where, where we, we want to be. be. Like, like people, people ask me, like, like, oh, oh, like, like congrats, you're doing, doing another story. story. I'm like, dude, I'm like, ain't done shit yet. You know, so just, you know, hang on, right? But it's just, just we we always work with sense of urgency. But but you know, we we we. We have, we enough, have time enough time to show gratitude, to show gratitude for the little, little wins, wins that come along the way. Yeah. And, that's and that's what, what, that's what, that's what kind of keeps me in a, in a good, good space about it. About it. Because, because like, like, if you're, if you're just, like, like constant, constant, huge goal, goal unrealistic, unrealistic expectation, expectation that you, that you know, know subconsciously that you can't, can't hit within, within this, time this time frame, frame it just it gives you this, like, like this fucked up perception of what it's really all about. And then you're willing to compromise on certain moral values to... You know, you maybe, know try maybe try to try expedite, expedite your journey, journey or do things, things that otherwise, otherwise you would not. not. Yeah. If you yeah. could just, just slow down. down. Yeah. yeah. Smell the fucking rosy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so um, yeah, I, yeah, mean, that, I that's, mean, that's 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 what, that's what I would tell my younger self. I was like, like coming right out of college, pissing in vinegar. I was like, let's fucking get it. Let's go make seven figures. Let's go make seven figures. Let's be a baller, blah, blah, blah. And that's not what it's about. Not at all. So enjoy the journey. Slow down. You will You will get there. But uh, it's, uh, it's fucking hard. 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 Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and uh, one more. One more. That's the thing, That's the thing I, appreciate I appreciate that Andy Frisella talks, talks about relatively, relatively, relatively often, often, too, is his, his journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it, was it was the first, the first like, 10 or 15 years, he made $56,000 total. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yep, yep. So, like, so like people, don't people don't understand that, that first half, half of the grind. grind. Like, they, they just see where he's at right now. now. It's like, oh, time for all of these, like, like beautiful, beautiful cars, cars and this huge, like, like that's right, that's right. Land. But, he, but he, they, didn't they didn't see that, that huge, huge grind, grind getting, getting stabbed, stabbed in the face, in the face and all that. 100%. I mean, I mean, and, like, like, I, I, I resonate, I resonate a, lot a lot with Andy so not just because we're in the fitness industry, both as, like, retail store owners, but, you know, you know, like, like, during COVID, like, there, like, there, there, were, there were nights that I slept, I slept in my store, right, right. too, too, you know? You know? Um, and it, 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 it wasn't because I had to. It was because, you know, cool late nights, nights, nights and I had a couple of glass couch, 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 you know? I was like, shit, dude, we'll just hit work out at 2 in the morning and breeze through the day. But, you know, it's just like that tenacity, right? And Andy Purcell and the Supplement Super Store guys, they've helped us out a ton. At a personal level. I'm very thankful for. And... A lot, a lot of what, of what I've, learned I've learned from, from him, him uh, and, uh, and uh, the Supplement Super, Super Store crew is, is what has, has allowed, allowed us to scale without going, going into, into too much detail, detail but, but they, they are, they're, they're giving, giving individuals, individuals, and that's, that's to put it lightly, right? right? I mean, they, they all give you the shirt off the back, back, and, and they're, they're, they're the real deal, so it's not like, like it didn't just happen. Yeah, they're all awesome people, and the content that they put out on a freaking daily basis is worth the weight in gold, so... I mean, I mean, any anybody, anybody that's, that's looking, looking for, like, for like mentoring, mentoring or coaching, coaching listen, listen to the to Real AF podcast. podcast. Right, right. <laughs> like, like, yeah. I mean, I mean that, that right there will give you tremendous amounts of value you won't spend a dime. dime. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, 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 100%. 100%. Shout out to Big AF. Yeah, yeah. So, so. so now that we're at the end, we do want you to shout yourself out. So where can people, like, follow your journey and, like, Learn more, Learn more about, about the brand. 100%. 100%. Uh, NutriPrimeUSA.com. Uh, uh, you, you can tune, tune into, into our blog, blog right there and, and our, um, our online, online storefront. storefront. Um, all of our, all stuff, our stuff that we have in-store, in store, we have online, online as well. As well. Always, always upholding map pricing. pricing. You'll never you pay more with us than any other retailer. In-store, we always try to beat online pricing, too. So if you're local, make sure you swing by 132 Racing Drive at 10. Um, so it's so up to myself, myself or any of our team, team members, members. We will, we will be, coming be coming to Marsh, Marsh Oaks, Oaks Commons, Commons in, in Porter's, Porter's Neck, directly, directly across from True Fit. Um, um, we don't we have don't a have tentative open, open date, date yet, yet. Uh, um, but it but will be middle, middle of the summer. summer. And, and uh, we're, uh, super we're super excited to come out of that market. market. We've, We've got, got um, um, great rapport great with the True Fit gym, Mike Valentino that owns that. Shout out to Mike Mike B. And yeah, yeah. All your social media needs. We got you. Nutri Prime. Also hit us up on Facebook or Instagram. Get Nutri Prime. And... 
Hope to see, see everybody soon. soon. See. see. Hey, hey. Oh, so you're oh, in, so in, the in the shop with Chipotle. Chipotle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, see. Right over there right behind Chipotle, Chipotle. Yeah. 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 That's, what That's what everyone, everyone hears. They're like, like, what is what this is name? Because they're making up names. Like, like, you say Chipotle. Oh, we know what that is. Porter's Lake Chipotle. Go there. Go find us. I'm excited. If you guys want to find us, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the fun stuff. Check us out on Spotify. Like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Later. Ooh.